Welcome to Worship in Our Sanctuary today, and uh, from wherever you are worshiping from today, we're glad that you are here on uh, this uh, fall Sunday. <laughs> I hope your Thanksgiving was a special day. Uh, we have a week in between Thanksgiving Sunday and the first Sunday of Advent this year. That doesn't always happen. I'm always uh, appreciative when it does, though, a chance to just sort of um, reflect a little bit and look ahead as we prepare ourselves for the season of Advent and for, uh, as we know it, the beginning of a new church year. The church year begins on the first Sunday of Advent, so uh, we're looking into to heading into that. So I look forward to this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So on the back of your um, bulletin, I have the December calendar so far. Nancy's going to help me put that in the form of a newsletter, but I wanted to get that out to you just so you, that you would have some of those dates. And we're not going to certainly go over them all. You can take it home with you. But I did want to point out Tuesday's meeting with uh, Matt Rosine, the our representative from the Christian Church Foundation. So if you're interested in coming to meet him and to talk a little bit with him, that's happening on Tuesday afternoon. But the rest of them you can read for yourself and find out lots more details as time goes on. But for now, we prepare our thoughts, our minds, our hearts for being in this place and for being in worship. Uh, it is a, a, a verb. We do have to do something to get ready for it. So I invite you to get yourselves ready to be in a spirit of worship by standing, if you're able, and joining in our call to worship, followed by our hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let's stand together for our call to worship. The Lord continually watches all of God's own sheep. They are led to green pastures and brought before still waters. Praise God for God's tender and loving care of us. Thanks to God for all the mercies God shows to us. Let us enter God's heart, God's house with hearts filled with joy. O Lord, open our spirits to respond to your words of compassion. All glory, law, and honor.
And so we also come in worship preparing ourselves for prayer. An opportunity for us to just quiet our hearts, allow me to speak to God on our behalf, and yet offer at the same time, offer your hearts and your thoughts to God as well. So I invite you this morning as we begin our service with this prayer to quiet your hearts and minds and join with me as we speak to God. Let's pray. Good morning, God. You have given us this day. It is new. It is before us. We have put our feet on the floor and we are facing it. And so, God, I pray for each one of us today that as we face this day, we face it with eyes like yours, with hearts like yours. When we see a need in front of us, God, open our hearts to compassion and help us to respond. Open our eyes that we might see the opportunities we have to serve you. Help us to see that following your mandate to feed the hungry and bring nourishment to those who thirst, any activity of service, help us to see that as an act of great privilege and joy. Merciful God, we get so caught up in our own lives that we often fail to see others for whom we might provide some help and relief. You challenge us, don't you? You ask us to respond to the needs that are in front of us. God, give us your words of healing and hope and encouragement. Amazing God, you have allowed us the privilege all during this year to walk the pathways of hope with Jesus. We started with his birth, to the acceptance of his ministry, to the magnificent lessons about caring and compassion as he walked the roads of Jerusalem. From the encounters with hostile people to the cries of those in need, we have been blessed to learn from this servant. We have been blessed to have him as our example. So bring the joy of this day into our hearts, flood our lives with your words of hope that we might glow with delight at serving you by serving others. God, bless this church as we stretch and continue to learn what you would have us to do, cause us to be a haven of peace and hope in the world. Oh God, we offer you this prayer today and ask that you hear us as we pray the prayer that your son has taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> So one more word in the Gospel of Matthew before we start the new Advent season. One more word. It's a familiar one, I think. But I also don't think it hurts for us to hear it as many times as we can. The Gospel of our Lord from the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 31 through 46. Now we're taking this passage of scripture, keep this in mind, we're taking this passage of scripture out of a whole big speech and sermon of Jesus. So we're picking a piece of it apart. We're picking it up towards the end. We'll talk about that in a minute. But just sort of keep this in mind that this is just part of a bigger piece. And Jesus is preaching and talking and he says this. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then those righteous ones will reply, but Lord, when, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty or give you something to drink? Or when did we see you a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, what's the answer? You were doing it to me. And then the king will turn the other direction to those on his left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Youch, Jesus. For I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me to your home. I was naked. You didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. And they'll reply the same thing. Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison? When did we not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. I don't know about you, but this scripture is an oucher for, for me. This is a tough one. It's not, it's, it's not pleasant, honestly. That's a, that's a tough, these are tough words from Jesus. He does not let anybody off uh, easy at the end of this sermon. So we have been in Matthew for a long time, this Gospel of Matthew. So for buku chapters, Jesus has now attempted to describe to us what the kingdom of heaven is like. And you remember from several months of this that the kingdom of heaven is often described uh, in very common terms, like farming and harvesting, and gathering, and all of that. So the same is true for now. This time he uses animals, the sheep and the goats. Now this, keep this in mind, because this, the, his early hearers would have understood this. This is what they did for a living. Harvesting, farming, sheeping, shepherding, sheep and goats. So they would have understood this, and it was a, a, a subject kind of near and dear to their heart. So when he talks about this separating of the sheep and the goats, it's something that everybody could understand. And to this day, it's common for farmers in that region to separate the I mean, they, they graze together, side by side. And there's a practical reason for this. Sheep are docile creatures. Goats are much more stubborn. Should a human or an animal try to sneak up and drive the herd away, the goats will raise a ruckus, the sheep will follow. They, give, they get along just fine. But when it's time to shear a sheep or take it to market, then the farmer has to separate the two, the sheep from the goats, and he stands there, staff in hand, nudging one way and one the other. So they would understand this. So when Jesus sets out to teach his followers about the kingdom, he uses this familiar, this familiar scene. Sheep go one way, goats go the other. Now, here we go. Here's what to pay attention to. So it's not really the guilt-inducing story that it appears. <laughs> At least, it would not have been the guilt-inducing story to Jesus hears, because it's not really about what you need to do to make it into heaven, or who's going to make it in, or who won't. It really is the very first time that 
this attention grabber would have been used and and right out of the gate he said you don't know you don't know like right out of the gate it says all nations are going to gather before him so you don't get to know who's good who's bad everybody comes in that scenario that he's presenting all the nations come together nobody knows okay and that's right out of the gate. So all nations are gathered before him. Okay, so the Jewish listeners would have said to themselves, oh, 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 this is the moment we've been waiting for. Now we're going to hear about all those goats, how all those Gentiles are going to get theirs. Well, we, we, the sheep, the chosen sheep, will be saved. But that's not the way the story ends up, is it? Jesus, the storyteller, deals them a surprise ending, one that kind of makes them think twice. So we don't know who's who. We don't know who gets to be sheep and who gets to be goats. It doesn't tell us that. All of them come equally. All of them come pretty clueless, really. They're asking that question. When did we see you like that? We didn't see you. We've never seen you like that. We've never seen you this, 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 and this. And the Messiah answers, well... Just like you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Members of my family, it says. My brothers and sisters. Members of my family. Ooh, Lord, ouch. So just that minute later, Jesus clues his listeners on on that distinguishing mark. It has nothing to do with ethnic background. It has nothing to do from where they're from. It has everything to do with whether they've lived a caring, in a caring and compassionate way. Not ethnicity, but empathy. Not membership, but mercy. Not lineage, but love. And this is a truly revolutionary message for his day and age. And it's probably not a message that many of those people wanted to hear because they had pretty good ideas of who was in and who was out already. In fact, in the very next chapter, very next chapter, they start plotting to kill Jesus. So this story, this, this, this little bit of scripture right here was like the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay? He'd been on their nerves for a long time. And this particular passage of scripture pushed them over the edge. Now we've got to get rid of this guy. He's making us feel really uncomfortable. So that's what's happening. Okay? So, true confession. I think you already got it. This is kind of a cringe-worthy story for me, really. It is a little guilt-inducing for me, honestly, upon reading it. Because sometimes I do walk on by those who are the least of these. But there's another way of hearing this story, and that is a message of hope. That's addressed to the entire world, all the nations. Remember that the story begins, all the nations gathered before him, not just the people of Israel, not just you and I, not just us good churchgoers. Everybody was gathered. And all the people will be judged and found worthy. And the standard of judgment is not what y'all think it is. The standard of judgment has nothing to do with what groups we belong to, what we do in our lives. It will have everything to do with the people that we have reached out to. It will have nothing to do with the love that we've felt inside. It will have everything to do with the love that we have given out. And if our faith has become more a matter of believing than doing, then I think we need to think about that. If our time for doing things for the least of these is non-existent or at least out of balance, I think we need to think about that. Because, Lord, when did I see you like that? Because if you were, I missed it somehow. I wasn't paying attention. I've been pretty self-exorbed lately, and I, I haven't given you the time that I should have, and so on and so on and so on. I'll end it with a story about a little Presbyterian church in Texas. And this church had given money to help build a clinic to provide health care for poor people in their area. But not long after the clinic opened, it came to the attention of the church's governing board that some of the poor people that were being cared for in this clinic 
were undocumented immigrants. And this created a sharp division in this church because half of them believed that their financial support should continue and half believed that it should be cut off because giving health care to illegals was to disregard the laws of the nation. And after many meetings and much prayer, the session turned to a conflict resolution specialist to help them through it. And that consultant challenged them to take a field trip to the clinic to experience the ministry firsthand. And so the meeting was set up. They arrived to see the clinic. The receptionist asked the group to sit in the waiting room until the doctors and nurses were free. And one of the harshest critics of that, of that clinic was an older man who happened to catch the eye of a skinny little Latino boy who was there with his mother. And without a hint of hesitation, the boy toddled over to the man, gave him a big smile, and climbed up into his lap. And before long, the boy was playing with the elder's tie and laughing, and the man was entertaining him as only a wonderful grandfather could. Finally, the session and members were called into a meeting, and the older man asked the medical team about the little boy and his family. Yeah, they were undocumented. They had come that day to receive immunizations that nearly every American child receives already, but not commonly available to them. And later that week, as the session gathered to discuss their experience, this elder who had been de a determined opponent to the clinic spoke eloquently about how important it is to provide health care for all of God's family, regardless of legal status. When did we see you sick, Lord? <laughs> You saw me in the dark, laughing eyes of a little refugee boy. You spoke no English, you spoke no Spanish, but your hearts met and danced with each other. What does the Lord require of us? We are the harvest. We are, or should be, the sheep that the careful and discerning judge separates from the goats. We are the ones to whom, by sheer grace, he may one day say, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So think about your week ahead. People might be put into your path this week for whom you need to be the hands and feet and heart of Jesus. If so, remember the scripture and these words. When you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. Let's pray. God, help us to understand that your kingdom will be filled with people who had care and compassion and action for others. Go ahead and put people in our path this week, God, for whom we can respond with kindness and encouragement and compassion and help. Give us eyes to see and help us to remember that by doing it to the least of these, we did it to you. In your name we pray. Amen. As we have entered into this sanctuary today, with the remaining smells and sights and sounds of thanksgiving still in our minds, let us remember that we have the opportunity to joyfully share from the bounty which God has provided. And in the love and name of Christ, let us receive our morning offering. Thank mm -hmm. you.
And so we prepare ourselves to come around the table of the Lord. And as we come to the table today, may we do so with a grateful and generous heart, thankful for a faith that provides help to us in hard times, thankful for the ability to share that faith with those in need. Come to the table. All are invited. Celebrate the gift that was given to you, the gift of God's eternal love and forgiveness and grace. Our communion hymn today is Jesus, Name Above All Names. his invitation, let us pray. Dear God, we come to this table in gratitude for the love that you provide, the forgiveness that you offer, the grace that you grant, and the gift of your son Jesus, who showed us how to live and died on the cross for our sins. Your love has brought us together, and it is your love that sustains us each day. We are indeed sheep who stray from the green pastures and still waters as we cry out in need. And we thank you, our great shepherd, for hearing us, for seeking us out, and rescuing us from the places that we have wandered. As we partake of the bread that we break today, we are reminded of Jesus' sacrifice and your abundant care. For you feed us, guard us, protect us, and forgive us. As we drink of this wine, fill us with your spirit and help us to respond to the needs of the world around us as you have responded to ours. Give us the courage to witness to your presence in the world. Let us tell the world of your faithful love and model your love through our actions, feeding and caring your children. And they are all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. And that night in the upper room, Jesus met with his disciples. And after dinner, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and he poured it out and he said, This cup is a new covenant poured out for the remission of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Amen.
As always, it's good to be in God's house for worship. I hope that you have received a bit of a springboard into your week, a jump start, if you will, to be able to share God's love and forgiveness with those you meet. I invite you to stand for our closing song, followed by our benediction, and then we will spend a little bit of time in prayer. Let's stand together for our closing song, Awesome God. to be in ministries of compassion for all God's people. Love this world as God has loved you. Amen. <laughs>